so what do we need to know as we gear up for peak storm season? Because we know we're heading toward it. Let's ask National Weather Service meteorologist Andy QP. He works at the NWS in Memphis, a very busy office recently, and also an area, part of the country, familiar with these overnight tornadoes. Let's start with the dangers, though, Andy, as, as you're joining us this evening. Uh, why they are more dangerous at night, and then also the magnitude. Is there a correlation between evening tornadoes being stronger than those during during the day, or is it more random? Hey, that's a good question. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, so talking about nocturnal tornadoes, uh, we're no strangers to that. We live here in Dixie Alley, which is adjacent and downstream of Tornado Alley. So they get the stuff during the daytime, and six to eight hours later, we get it here at night. So uh, the Mid-South's no stranger to these things. Uh, the reason they are so deadly, obviously, you can't see them. You guys have already alluded to lightning, power flashes. The only ways you're going to be able to actually get visual visuals on it. So people are also in bed. They're sleeping. So they need to have multiple ways to have warnings. So if they don't have a weather radio and their smartphone charged and other things like that, they simply may not get the warning. Uh, tornado sirens are just not good enough. You're inside, you have good insulation, you're just not going to hear it. So that, because people can't get the warning a lot of times, mm. they may uh, become a victim of these deadly tornadoes. Absolutely. So you did mention that not having that visual, or it's not as easy to get a visual, can be a little bit tricky tracking these nighttime tornadoes. Are there any other challenges posed to tornado warnings during the nighttime? Uh, for us, you know, we pretty much, we warn the same way, you know, so we're, we're highly trained to interrogate radar signatures. Uh, we take lots of different training, especially for these QLCS or linear system type uh, tornadoes. So we know what to look for and we know the, the areas in which we, they're going to form and, and things like that. So the problem is spotters. So out in, you know, the tornado alley, during the day, you're going to have spotters. There's quite a few that are out there. It's a network. They provide eyes on the ground. So at night, we simply just do not have that. It's it's more dangerous to spot at night. Uh, a lot of chasers won't chase here just because we have a lot of trees, some rolling hills. And, and so those are the obstacles that we face. Not having ground truth, knowing it's on the ground where we can upgrade to a tornado emergency, knowing that a strong, deadly tornado is going to affect a metro. Uh, makes it more difficult. In fact, when we've had those bimodal threats these past couple of weeks, we've talked to trackers and they had positioned themselves farther up to the north, Andy, for that very reason you mentioned. Uh, the, the, the trees a lot of times sure. obscuring the view for, for those tornadoes, but, but you guys still get them. In fact, statistically speaking, Tennessee experiences uh, nocturnal tornadoes more frequently than, than other states. It's on the higher end. Is there a particular reason why, meaning are, are there atmospheric factors or just factors that assist in, in this happening more frequently? You had mentioned these systems come out of the plains uh, in the afternoon and move through, uh, but particularly for, for your area and for Tennessee? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, about 60% of our tornadoes do occur at night here. And being uh, you know downstream of Tornado Alley, where they occur typically during the day, that system moves into our area at night. So we are at higher risk. We do have more, uh, a lot of mobile homes, a lot of people that are not in adequate shelters. We do not have basements. Uh, that's one of the leading factors why we have so many deadly tornadoes. There's just no basements here and a lot of people in mobile homes. So they are at a very high risk. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's over, you know, if it's an EF3 or greater, typically even a well-constructed house, mm -hmm. uh, there could be fatalities. So. So given that, the mobile home aspect, how can anyone be prepared for nighttime tornadoes, whether you live in a mobile home or a, a more well-constructed home? Uh, that's a great question, too. So if you're in a mobile home, we have a high risk. Everything we're about is preparedness. So getting the word out, getting the messaging out through all different mediums, our local media, through social media, through our web page. If we know we're in a high risk that day and you are in a mobile home, you need to go and stay with a relative or find out where your local shelter is by contacting your emergency manager. Uh, you need to be out of a mobile home. Even when we have damaging straight line winds, mobile mm -hmm. homes are very, very dangerous. It, it takes barely uh, greater than 60 mile an hour winds to pick up and loft a trailer. And then you can just imagine you are compromised at that point. So what we recommend is, is stay in tune with the weather, have multiple ways to get warnings. If you are one of those high risk areas, 
where you live in a mobile home or you live in a house that is not well constructed or even well constructed, know where you're going to shelter, mm -hmm. consider investing for you and your family in getting a storm shelter. And then also, like I said, leaving a mobile home, you cannot stay there for the night. It mm -hmm. is not safe. All too often, our fatalities are associated with that. Absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong with knocking on the door of a friend or family member. Such a good idea. You just never know. National Weather Service Memphis forecaster Andy QP. Andy, thank you so much for your uh, advice. I hope a lot of people really take it to heart. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.